All right, hey guys, it's Josh and Rachel here at Porter Valley Ranch. So today we are taking you on a little journey. Uh, this took a couple days to film because there was a couple steps to this process. But as you guys know, we have a Nubia Ibex goats, mountain goats that we raise. We have a horse, we have a pig named Lulu. Um, we have some dogs and a menagerie of chickens. So it's kind of, a, the farm's kind of turning into more of a zoo. But Rachel has been insistent that we needed one more breed of animals, um, and Rachel usually gets what she wants. So Rachel, why did you think we needed something else on our farm? Well, I'm gonna stick with my only animal on the farm is the showgirl chicken. Those are my favorite. They're, they're for me. However, we kind of started seeing these adorable pictures of little teddy bears, which are actually called baby doll sheep and my middle son started to fall in love with them and I just kind of started making the connection that he is probably the least invested around here. Our oldest is involved in not just taking care of the animals but the doctoring of the animals, the maintenance of the animals and even building the pins for the animals. He loves it all. He'll do every aspect of it and it is his passion. Our middle one's kind of the one we have to kick out the front door and tell him to go work on stuff and, and get him more motivated. He needs to be more motivated. So we thought, all right, he's really connecting on this. He's really falling in love with this animal. Let's see if he will take some ownership here and, and if we are willing to get that for him, let's see what that does for him as a little farmer or rancher around here. So we started looking into this and he is very, very cerebral. He wants to think through every step of something before he commits, and which I completely respect because he's not going to make a decision that he can't keep up with. And so we started seeing more pictures about it. We started reading things on the internet. We started going to YouTube looking at videos of baby doll sheep. Uh, that led to checking out a book at our library and we even drove about an hour and a half away to show him one so that he could actually like touch it, see it, understand it a little bit better and all of these things kept pointing to the direction that he was just loving this animal and we thought you know there's nothing really out here that he goes and cuddles or puts on a halter and leads around like this might really do the trick and so he started thinking more and more about whether he could handle all of that responsibility and we started as we researched we were praying and we were discussing it and finally he got to the point where it's what his heart ultimately wanted even though he was afraid he would be taking a step in something he doesn't understand whether he can fully do on his own so we we already had some life lessons before we even went looking for these things uh we found some in kansas we found a yearling and a six month old and it was nearly impossible to find anything online right now because you're just supposed to be getting on lists for their babies in the spring. So if you get a spring baby, chances are you're probably not going to have them bred next fall. So you're looking at a year and a half wait before you have any babies. So we were lucky to find the yearling and lucky to find the six month old and when we talked to the owner she thought they were both bred. So we're taking that chance and not doing a ram this year and seeing if we can start out with some, some yeah, moms. So we are going to show you our journey to go get them. Um, it was three hours to get there and it felt like another three hours to get down the people's driveway. So um, here is our journey to go get the baby doll sheep. made it to Lewisburg and we are about to trek in our four wheel drive down this, um, I'd call it dirt, but it's really like a mud road. So we're going to see how this goes. And we're here to get two, two ewes. One is a yearling and should be bred. And the other one was born in March and is a little bigger than normal. So she's thinking that she is bred. Um, so we're hoping that we have two mamas to take home and, um, we're excited to be here and we're excited to see how Kai reacts to all of this and we can't wait to get him home and, and keep you guys on this journey with us. Hi. Are we in a mud out? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Daddy, your car's broken. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to side side. Come on, Kai, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hop on, Kai. On the Are you 
Is that we're supposed to go up here? No. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We don't, we don't have time to be stuck today. older one and she's the cutest thing. I didn't want to get rid of her but she's related. I've got her dad and her brother. Mm -hmm. That's Maggie and that's Mary. That's their registered name so okay. you can rename them. You're gonna have to win her over, Kai. Love on her. Yep. Come on, Mag. 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 Walking her in. <laughs> Walking her in. You don't want to get away. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Too much work for catching. Mary. Alright, so what do you think? Josie, you guys just keep each other so you know how to do it. Okay, and then I'll get that email of the vaccination. Got the sheep. Got the sheep. Alright. Now we're going and we're going home and yeah, okay. We gotta go work today. Alright. Okay, thank you guys. Alrighty. There's only one more sticky part, and then the rest of it's pretty easy. Okay, the sheep are loaded and we made it back through the road and we're about to get on the highway and it's about 10.30 and we are supposed to be working by four. So barring any complications, everything should work out really well. And I hope I don't regret saying that, but we're excited that we can, we woke up at five this morning to get this done and we're ready to get back, get them moved home and go to work. working on Kai? Um, ELA. And you're gonna get all your your schoolwork done on the way home? Yeah. From the car? Yeah. Pretty awesome. Jet, what about you? I want um, big and small, a big um, baby doll shape and a small baby doll shape. Which one's the big one? The big one. Which one? The black one or the white one? All right, so we got the sheep. Uh, we brought them back home, and we are going to get them um, sheared, shorn, shorn, sheared by a sheep shearer. She shorn by the sheep shearer named Sharon. Nah, <laughs> the name's not Sharon. The name's Derek. Derek. Anyway, um, so one thing that's important whenever you are getting a new breed of animal is to do your research on the breed, and then also on the registry system. So there is a North American baby doll. Sheep registry. Sheep registry, nab, nab, babs, nab star or something like that. Um, so it's important that they are registered. That way you know that they're coming from reputable breeders. Um, there are another breed of sheep that look very similar to these, so you want to make sure that they're, they're purebred. And then there is also a little tag on the end of the registration that says RR or QR or SRQQ. There's lots of letters. You don't really need to know what any of the letters mean because we don't know what they mean either. But what we do know is RR is the top level of registry. And the reason is because um, 
when they are RR, they are immune genetically from a certain type of disease that can be carried. Um, so you do not want to bring anything onto your property that has a genetic disease possibility, if possible. So when you get these, if you get these, make sure that they are registered RR, which ours were. And that's why we drove so far away to get them because, as Rachel said earlier, they're kind of hard to find and you need to make sure that they're registered properly. Um, so the place that they were living was kind of wild. Um, they were in a pen with a lot of animals and there was there was a lot of mud around. So we just thought it would be best to bring them home, get them um, shorn, sheared, whatever you want to say, I don't know, it's and fun. shorn and make sure that they were nice and clean to start with. Even though they're super cute, whenever they have all their wool, we need them to be clean and start from a good place. So we're gonna go do that. Here is the, chip, the trip to get our sheep shorn by the shearer. Hey guys, all right, so we made it home last night uh, with the sheep. Uh, when we got home, well, Rachel and I both had to be at work within about an hour. Um, so we didn't get a lot of time to talk about them, but they are still uh, in this trailer. Uh, we just went ahead and gave them some hay and some water, left them in here overnight because today we are taking them to get sheared. Um, a lot of people only shear their sheep once a year, but since we're bringing these from a different um, farm, um, it's not really close to here, it was a couple hours away, we wanna make sure and not bring any uh, insects or bugs or parasites or anything that can all collect into their wool. Um, these guys have been really well taken care of, but they're, the pen they were in was pretty muddy, so they're just dirty. Um, so rather than wash them and try to fight everything, we're just gonna take them and get them sheared and just start over with a clean slate. So we are going to Chelsea, Oklahoma, and we're gonna get these guys sheared, cleaned up, so that they look good for our party on Saturday where having some people come over. So uh, we're gonna go do that. You guys can come watch. We don't really know what to expect. We never do. We didn't know what to expect yesterday when we had to drive up a, a cliff of, the, of mud and almost get stuck. <laughs> we don't know what we're getting into today. So it's always an adventure at Porter Valley Ranch. Thanks for watching. Yeah, but they're, they're just, well, they need a little. This, they don't have much of a hand. <laughs> they really don't. That one has a little longer snout. This one's got one of those stubby faces. They may always want to hang on the floor. It makes it cuter. <laughs> Oh, she's small. I like to pet him. And then there's South Town baby dolls. Yeah. Baby dolls are. This is. These are baby dolls. These are miniature baby dolls. <laughs> We started giving ours the bolus, you know, the bolus you can do, and that's really helped. Um, the nice thing is, you just rotate this fast as long as you're, you're pinning your copper somewhere where it can right. be removed. But what they saw, it's, it's nice. The downside to the self down is it doesn't fill well. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to make socks, it's great. Huh. If you're trying to make dryer balls, it doesn't work. Interesting. Not a cow. It's not a cow. What is it? It's a sheep. Hey, go talk to her so she's not scared. She misses her friend. But the lamblin is what makes them waterproof. So that they don't, they're not standing out there all wet. They, the water rolls off of them. And if you take the wool and process it without, you can process it and clean it without removing the lanolin, then make a hat out of it, and the hat is waterproof, hmm. or water resistant, it rolls off. But eventually the lanolin will wash out and wear off. So there's all kinds of cool stuff to learn. <laughs> yes. And you can do everything. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> he fell. Did he fall asleep or what? No. She's just being dramatic. Yes, I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> She's oh, just six me. months old. Or maybe he's just tired. Come on, baby. Come on. It's actually not my first time I lay out my sister. 
Oh, I'm gonna back you right in it, okay? That is so uh -huh. soft. No. Uh -huh. soft. <laughs> All right, so we've got the baby dolls back here. Uh, they don't look great because they had to get shorn and they're a lot cuter whenever they have all their wool and they're all fuzzy like a teddy bear. But they are now clean. Uh, we did find some, some fungus on one of them underneath their wool um, because it gets real thick and if they have anything underneath there. So it was a good thing that we did it. They were very dirty. Um, so now we've got them. They are a little wild, as you can see right here. But we're trying to feed her a little bit. Um, make sure that you do your homework you cannot feed these guys a lot of grain they can't handle it so make sure you know what you can and can't feed them no copper. they no copper for sure um they mostly just eat grass and hay uh we can give them a little bit of corn here and there um, to help gentle them down a little bit but make sure you do your homework so uh we have another video coming out that talks about what we get and why so one thing with these baby dolls is that they're a little bit more expensive than some other sheep breeds and we talked about earlier how we got them registered with the RR registration. Um, so whenever they have offspring, they're gonna we're gonna be able to sell them um, for more than than average, which is kind of our game here. Uh, we don't want regular goats. We want to raise these ibex. Uh, we don't want regular sheep. We want to raise something kind of novelty like these baby dolls. Um, so be looking for that video. It's coming out soon that kind of explains our philosophy on what we're doing here at the farm and why we're picking the animals that we're picking. But hopefully um, these guys will tame down a little bit and you will get to see Kai um, kind of take them through their journey of becoming gentle pets and then hopefully having babies in the spring that he can raise and show next fall. So we're excited about them and welcome them to the ranch. This is Doodle and the white one's name is Dolly. Dolly. So Dolly and Doodle, welcome to Porter Valley Ranch. We'll see you guys next time. So in the show notes below, we are going to put a link that tells you some things you can and can't feed your sheep. So make sure and read that. It's really good information. There are some, some surprising things that you should not be feeding them, like out of your garden. Kale, for instance. Do not feed them kale. We don't know why, but it's bad for them evidently. So make sure and read that. It's really good information. If you are interested in getting on our list, we will have a lot of babies in the spring. A lot of little Ibex babies. We're going to bottle feed some. We'll also have some baby doll sheep. So if you are interested in getting in our list to get some of our babies in the future, please email us or direct message us on any of our platforms. Platforms. Also be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram and if you're watching this on YouTube make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know as soon as we post a video you'll get to watch it when it comes out. We would love to see your comments, suggestions, feedback, anything you need we're here to help. We are just starting and we know some of you are too so let's help each other out. Make sure and let us know if there's anything we can do for you and we will see you guys next time at Porter Valley Ranch.